Hey, and I'm here. I'm back again to talk about a book. Anyways, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. You know, for a pretty thick book, you know, almost 300 and a half pages, I probably read it in about a week. I like and I love like reading, but I don't always have the time, so uh, it's pretty good for me to read that big of a book in about a week. Uh, so why did I read Handmaid's Tale? Uh, my sister-in-law told me about it. Uh, I think we were talking about Bitcoin, maybe, uh, and she said something about how uh, Handmaid's Tale talks about online banking, and she was she was surprised about like how like someone would know about online banking so far in advance of it becoming a thing, because this book published in uh, 1985 uh, and so that was a long time before online banking so that kind of inspired me to read this book so basically the main character uh, is a handmaiden I don't know that you really know her name early on in the book she kind of shows up at this house uh, which basically means she's like a person who is there to create babies um, and then it's kind of like a story about it's like a mix between the past and the present um, what I did while I was reading this is I made some points, and I, I feel like these are the things that I should talk about here. Maybe the ideas that I found interesting are something that's uh, unique to me, so let's talk about that. I was kind of hesitant to watch the TV show because I knew I would want to read the book. Um, and But I do just keep on imagining um, like the main character, like her face. And so like whenever I, when I first started reading the book, I just kept on imagining the actress like from Mad Men. And so that's interesting. It's like when you read when you when a movie exists or a TV show exists, it kind of like clouds your mind about like what something can be, right? Like it kind of it sets the conditions, right? And and that's kind of like a good thing about books is that you can use your imagination to fill in the gaps and no one has to be anything that they are. Um, but then once you have seen like a TV show or a movie, then you have this like image of what someone should look like or like what the context should look like. And and I feel like that kind of ruins a book a little bit um, because like I'm kind of I'm kind of OK with not knowing what someone looks like. There are lots of like flashbacks to the past and the present. And so like it's not linear. Sometimes you like crave more about the past, you know, like about how things became the way that they did. And the book does a good job of, I guess, of explaining that. But like, I kind of wish that there was more, like, how did it become this way? It's kind of ahead of its time because like some of the th stuff that it talks about is, is, is happening now. Um, I, d I don't imagine that our future would go the way that this book did. I was told that this was a feminist book. And I don't know what that means. What is a feminist book? Is that because it becomes from the perspective of like a woman and opposed to from the perspective of a man? Like I feel like it's just like it's a book from the perspective of a woman. Another thing that I noticed, and it took me a while to notice this, I think about 140 pages, so maybe like almost halfway through the book, uh, I realized like the names of Glenn. When I first noticed this, I just kind of was reading it like as like a name and I wasn't really thinking of it, but then it clicked. I'm like, oh, of Glenn. She's the handmaiden of Glenn. Um, or Warren of Warren so like it's like a, a portrait of a person without knowing who that person really is like you kind of know who the people in her life were like you just kind of get a sense of who that person is I guess that's like what every book is about right like every book is a, it's a reconstruction of things and I think that is that is something that's important about this book and you, she wasn't even allowed to have paper or pens or anything uh, so I guess that's kind of why that's interesting because like you get the sense that it's building up to being something that was written later afterwards at the end there's like this historical speech or something that talks about the book and then that that's kind of good because it puts everything in context it makes it makes sense out of the things that might have been missing or were unclear at the time while you were reading the book the handmaid and the commander play scrabble uh and that's kind of interesting uh because the handmaiden's not allowed to like read or have access to words and stuff so like it's kind of interesting that they play scrabble and opposed to some other game uh, one of the things that I think is, is pretty interesting, the main character is telling the story about how she tried to buy cigarettes on her way to work, and her card, her bank card, let's say, didn't work. And then when she went to work, she was told that she was fired and that she wasn't allowed to work anymore. So we learn from that that like all the women, uh, were their money was turned off. It's kind of like... Um, that typical fear is like uh, dystopian science fiction. It's like common to have this theme where like people like are kind of like erased from society uh people who have like opinions that are different or people who are like deemed as enemies of the state and i guess in this this idea like this idea is that women are enemies of the state um but yeah i think that's a common theme and i think that's like something that's like actually truly something we should be concerned about 
Um, I don't know about the working thing. I guess probably it's the same kind of like, you know, the social credit store and score in China would prevent someone from getting a job. Uh, but I feel like the more digitized our money becomes, and this seems to be the future, like we're going to have some kind of like digital cryptocurrency, like from the central banks, but like we could just get turned off. Like, you know, when you're using cash, like you can go to the bank, you can get some money and then you can go to a store and you can give that store money in exchange for their products. But like if all money was digital, uh, then someone could just turn you off. Like someone could just say, okay, that's the end of them. And uh, then they won't be able to purchase anything. And if there's no cash anymore, then there's no way to get around it. And then you would be dependent on other people. But then if there was like this like huge like fear-based society, there would be like a disincentive for somebody helping you out. It sort of is interesting because it's kind of like some a, a realistic fear of people of today. And this is this book was written like 25 years ago. And so like it's like 25 years ago you're talking about something that's sort of on this is on the forefront of actually a reality you know like how did how did she know 25 years ago what is starting to happen right now they talk about context a lot so basically saying like the context of this the context of that and and it's true it's like a lot of like how we determine what we can do what's good what's bad it all comes from the context of the situation like people's behavior and the way they act is kind of is framed by the context like the world they find themselves in that is what drives us and determines us and like sort of says what we can do and like that's a common theme um in self-help if uh if you want to change yourself you need to change your environment you need to change your context well like the context of the situation like everything around her makes what she has to do seem like reasonable it's a weird thing about like the human condition that we kind of get a sense of context from the world around us we determine what is appropriate behavior and what we can do that is an important theme in this book and that's an important theme in real life because context is very powerful even though we don't always like think of it that way one of the things she talks about in the book is how men didn't want to get married anymore and sort of like this sort of slow breakdown of family unit and of culture uh, and then that's why this like sort of religious movement had to come and make uh, families powerful again, make families strong again. And like the the women who weren't married or were in second marriages and stuff, they were like the types of people who would become handmaidens. And so it was like people who were like like religiously clean, I guess, were like allowed to persevere or were allowed to continue to exist. That's kind of an interesting thing in this day and age because it seems like like kind of the stuff she's talking about and it was like 20 years ago um is, is still like a concern now it's still a thing that's happening now like people are less interested in marriage they're less interested in like settling down uh they're less interested in having like you know like a traditional relationship it just seems like there's a whole bunch of uh things that she is talking about in this book that are like are very true to our current time um one of the main character's friends uh she kind of she meets her she had escaped and then she was caught again and she was trying to get away but she got caught and eventually had she was given the choice of either going to live in the colonies or staying as um like as like a jezebel because she was given this choice but she was like shown this video about like what life was like in the colonies and i feel like while you're reading the book uh it's hard to know that this this these colonies place are actually bad or it's just like it's just like propaganda it's just like this idea that's being told to the people to keep them in control and keep them in fear it's hard to tell whether or not it's actually a real place and i feel like that would be like a good way of controlling people is like telling them uh, that they might have to go to this other place and then they don't have to actually know if that other place exists that you just have to instill in them enough fear to make them afraid to go there uh, but then, you know, when you get to the end about the historical fact of the book, like the colonies were a real place. So it wasn't just propaganda. It was actually real. Um, but was it? This is the last thing I want to talk about. How there are lots of things being put on for show. The main character talks about how on the television, they show pieces of news about like different like things and it's like it seems like it's propaganda this is a pretty common theme because um, she talks about like how it's not clear about like who actually did like these there's some terrorist attacks she's like who actually did them and it kind of reminds me of um, of children of men there is this like this terrorist activities that they say oh these terrorists did it but then the terrorist group when they're talked to in confidence says that like well like we didn't do that that was the government they just said it was us and i think that's kind of like a interesting theme just in general because there's so many times that like we get told that certain people are doing things but like are they really doing those things or is someone else doing those things and we're just kind of being 
let on that something was done by someone who it actually wasn't done by but we don't have any way of verifying or knowing because like the only source of information is the information that we can get you know through the media through the tv uh so like it's kind of like a good trap uh to prevent you know regular people from digging a little bit deeper because if it's not coming from one of the approved sources then it's fake news it's an interesting thing because like right now it's kind of like a fear that the stories that we're being told about what's happening in the world around us aren't true or they're fabrications or they're being told to us for reasons that are disingenuous or dishonest I would recommend this book because it was it was pretty good. I found it a good sort of reality to think about uh, because there's lots of things that related to the world that we live in today. I got a lot out of this book. I've, I feel like the ideas that I got were what was most important. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, click that like button, click that subscribe button. Um, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you thought about this book or let me know if there's a book that you would like me to talk about at another time. I really appreciate it and I look forward to talking to you next time. I wrote this book. It's called How to Be Amazing, and it's a manifesto about how to live a more meaningful life. There'll be a link below, so check it out.